Work was God's idea. Some of us think that work came, and I've heard people say this to me, well, you know work came as a result of the fall. When Adam and Eve fell, God then gave them work to do as a result of the fall. And that is completely wrong. Work was God's idea. Look at Genesis 1, verse 28. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. Here's your job. Here's your work. And frankly, this idea of filling the earth and subdue it continues today. It's still part of our mandate. Look at Genesis 2.15. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. Here's your job. Here's your responsibility. Look at verse 18 of chapter 2. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone, for I will make him a helper fit for him. The woman was created to be a worker alongside the man in the work that God has given humanity to do. We've talked about it before. This idea of helper is a very high level word. It's the same word used for God. God's called a helper. Work is a way in which we then imitate God. When we work, we're imitating God. Go back with me to chapter 1, Genesis 1, verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. You don't need to look here, but Ephesians 5.1 tells us we are to be imitators. And that word imitate in the Greek is the word mimic. We are to mimic God as beloved children. We are made in his image, and part of being in his image is the ability then to mimic God, to imitate God. Look at verse 31. God saw everything that he had made. He worked six days. He worked, and behold, it was very good, and there was evening, and there was morning the sixth day. God worked. God engaged in creation, but frankly, God has not finished his work. Look at Genesis 2.2. And on the seventh day, God finished his work in those six days that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all of that creation that he had done, and he stopped. And just to remind us, God wasn't tired after six days. It's not like you've heard me say, he made the Himalayans going, wow, I'm exhausted. Oh, they took a lot more out of me than I realized. Why does he rest after six days? To model for us a day of rest. In our our mimicking of God then, we learn to rest because we watch that our God rested. But God's work continues in John 5, as we've been studying through John here at Park. Verse 15, you don't need to look there. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had healed him. Remember, this is the fool by the pool. And this was why the Jews were persecuting Jesus, because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. Jesus answered them and said, My Father is working until now, and I'm working. God continues to work. He continues to be engaged in creating. He continues to be about doing good. He continues to be about redeeming and restoring. He continues. And so as we mimic him, we also are engaged in this work. We just read that we are image bearers. We are God's image bearer. God created. He creates. He works even now. Jesus followed the example of his Father, working and creating. We imitate God, too, when we work and create within the context that God has given us. We bring pleasure and glory to our God when we work. God works and says it's good, and he models for us this good work as he models for us also rest. And all of this took place before the fall. But what did the fall do when Adam and Eve chose to live in rebellion, and we now too choose to live in rebellion? How does that rebellion affect our view of God? Look with me then at verse one, chapter 1, verse 28, and we'll move from there just to remind ourselves. And God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth, subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds in the heavens and every other living thing that moves on the earth. All right, there was the mandate. That's what Adam and Eve were to do. The cultural mandate that it's called then for followers of Christ, this cultural mandate, and I'll put it up here on the screen. 
The call to, to fill the earth and subdue it, creating culture, building cities, developing technology, creating art and music and everything else for the glory of God. That's our work. And we do that in the laboratories of the job that God has given us. But because of the fall, now look with me at Genesis 3, here's the influence of the fall. Work has become difficult. It's not given to us as punishment. Work is not punishment from God. Work was already established before Adam and Eve rebelled against God. But the fall has affected work. Chapter 3, verse 17. Adam and Eve mess up. We talked about this a number of times at Park, and if you're not from Park, you know that God creates these two trees, the tree of life and the tree of good and evil. And the good of evil, he says to them, don't eat from this tree, because frankly, he says, if you want wisdom, seek me. And all through the Bible, God is always saying, seek me for wisdom. And Adam and Eve says, no, I think we're going to take it upon ourselves. We frankly want to be like you. We want to be our own God. And so they fall. And God comes looking for them. And then he engages in conversation with them. And he says in verse 17 to Adam, because you have listened to the voice of your wife, it, you can put in parentheses, instead of me, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat because, because of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Here is what happens because of the fall. Work becomes hard. Work becomes hard. Most of us know that work is hard. And we understand that there's something wrong at times with work because it takes such effort. And it's not just the work we're giving in terms of the project, it's also the context of the people in which we work with. Satan rebellion against God has frustrated our ability to enjoy work to the fullest with it being easy because of the fall. Now, I've met a lot of people over the years that sometimes think their boss may in fact actually be Satan or a close associate because life is so difficult in that arena. What was once intended for good now has become distorted. Our fallenness has hindered what God intended for good. Work was to be enjoyed, it was to be pleasurable, it was to be in relationship with God without difficulty. But sin has entered in and has distorted that and made it hard. <coughs> but, it's true of all the curses in Genesis 3, there's a blessing to it. We don't have time to go through that, but if you look at every curse, every curse has a blessing. There'll be chain and pain in childbirth, but the blessing is a child. Same thing with work. When work is difficult, it creates within us a need to trust something greater than ourselves for help. We recognize we're unable on our own. And so we go, there must be someone else. There must be something else. There must be a greater power that we can trust in to find hope. So even in the curse, God brings about a blessing because he says, it's me. And for us, as followers of Christ, we know it is the presence of the Spirit in our lives. But let me just remind you, because of the fall, what's been introduced into work some of us have to fight laziness now because of the fall. We're lazy. We don't get to work on time. We don't do our jobs to the fullest. We cut corners. We look for others to take it. We're lazy. And laziness has come because of the fall. Laziness basically is a very self-centered way of a worldview saying, I'm at the center and I want my life to be comfortable and I want others to do for me. For some of us, we have to fight work being an idol, being our identity. Because of the fall, instead of seeing God for everything that God brings to us and finding our full satisfaction in God, because of our rebellion, we have now sought ourselves to be our God. We have now raised work up to bring us what God intends to bring us, our value, our validation. We allow work to consume us. 
And frankly, I line myself up underneath this one. I can be a workaholic. We don't know how to rest. We don't know how to take vacations. We don't know how to turn off email. We don't know how to put aside texts. We are forever sitting like this in meetings or at the table. We all have people in our life that are like this. Every few minutes where they feel anything in their pocket vibrate or whatever, they got to check. Just got to check. We can't put it down. There's a level of addiction. A first grader wondered why her father brought home his laptop and worked on it every evening. Every evening after dinner, he'd kiss his wife and his daughter and say, Honey, I need to go to my office and finish up my work. Her mother explained, Daddy has so much to do that he can't finish it all at the office. And this little first grader, with such sweet innocence, says, Why don't they put Daddy in a slower group? Some of us have to fight the urge to make job about how much money we can make, how much we can accumulate, how much stuff can we have. Because for us, we find our validation in the money, in the stuff, in the nice things. Money is not a sin in and of itself. Money is not sin. It is a tool that God intends for us to use for His glory. But when it becomes an idol, it dominates and we adjust and we change our thinking in order to feed it. Some of us see work as a place to achieve at all cost, and people don't matter. People are there to make me successful so that I can get where I need to be. Some of us see in that kind of context that work is a place for us to exercise authority over others, to dominate, to verbally beat people up, to withhold encouragement, to take credit for other people's work. But as followers of Christ, we understand work differently. Because of the gospel, we see it differently. We use four words at Park that we talk about from time to time as we think about God's work in creation. We'll put this up on the screen. Creation, fall, redemption, restoration. Creation of the world, the fall of Adam and Eve, the redeeming work of Jesus on the cross. But the thing that many of us forget is that there is a restorative restorative work of the gospel. The gospel is taking what is broken and making it right. The fall comes and brings about difficulty, pain, hard work. But the gospel brings restorative peace for us in work. We're redeemed, and when we're redeemed, the restorative process begins. What was once tainted or distorted has now begun to change through the, through the view of the cross. We are given the power, the ability to live as God intended us to live in relationship with Him and then in right relationship with each other. In all the things that we do now, we see through a different grid. Now we begin to understand what work is like. 